Chapter 13, Return Risk and the Security Market Line. I often call this chapter Expected Risk and Return. Okay, so this is the outline of the chapter. Let me just move on to um, <clears throat> what this chapter is mainly about. Uh, first, we will look at some math how we calculate the expected return and expected risk of returns for a single asset, for example, buying shares of stock from one company. And then we will do that for a portfolio of assets, for example, buying shares of stock from two different companies or three different companies or even more. Then we will look at a related topic known as diversification. So what is meant by diversifying your investment? <clears throat> Then we will look at the risk in more depth. So it turns out there are several different um, types of risk. And then we will look at, um, kind of go back to the whole risk and return trade-off, something that already came up in our previous chapter, chapter 12, where we looked at historical returns. <clears throat> so first let's compare the uh, this chapter with the chapter we did before this one, chapters 12 and 13. In uh, chapter 12, we were basically looking at historical data. So we, so we were talking about the past. We looked at historical returns, which were all known. So there was no such thing as uncertainty about what may happen, because it already happened. <clears throat> and this is something that will be different when we talk about the future. The future is uncertain. Then we'll, you, we'll calculate it, the average return, which we denoted by R bar on top. And we also calculated the standard deviation of past returns, which we denoted by sigma. <clears throat> and sigma squared was variance. In chapter 13, we will be looking at future returns. So the main difference between chapters 12 and 13 is uh, in chapter 12, we looked at past returns that already happened. In chapter 13, we will be basically trying to give our best estimate based on the information that's available to us today about what the return in one year, in two years, and so on may be. Um, the future is unknown, so the returns in the future are also unknown. So we have this uncertainty about what may happen in the future. And because of the uncertainty, we will be talking about probabilities. So, for example, we, we, we will be talking about something like most probably, so let's say with a 90% probability, right? Some So and so will happen. So let's say the return will be 15%, just like it's been in the last several years. Uh, but maybe there is a small chance, let's say 9% chance <coughs> uh, that... Um, it thinks will go much better for the company. And maybe the remaining 1% chance is um, in case something really unexpected bad may, may happen to the company whose shares we, we are buying now that will result in <clears throat> little to no dividends to us. So we will be talking about different outcomes that may happen and how likely or the probability for each. And in terms of the calculations, we will be essentially doing the same two sets of calculations like we were in Chapter 12, um, except we will be doing expected return <clears throat> and denote it, we will denote it by capital E brackets with capital R inside the brackets. Uh, so E stands for expected, R is return. And we will be also calculating the expected standard deviation of future uh, possible returns <coughs> with uh, the notation being capital E and then in the brackets we have the Greek sig um, sigma. <coughs>